of grueling research. It's all yours, Charlie. Jabba should be here shortly to take it to the trading post. You didn't have to send for him, Doc. Walter and I would have been pleased to go to Valentine's ourselves. We could both stand a change of atmosphere. Couldn't we, Walter? <laughs> you and that winged monster. Now get this box ready for shipment. Poor Walter, what you and I have to stand for around here. <laughs> Well, let's hope those serums stand up on a clinical test in New York as well as our experiments here indicated. I only wish we could have included a sample of the gift blower extract. That white woman who rules the Nailist tribe really messed us up on that. Yes. We never did find out what ingredient her medicine man uses to keep his concoction from spoiling. Say, Tom, why don't we make one more try for it? They say it's a woman's privilege to change her mind. Who knows how she feels about us now? Well, why don't we ask her? Well, I'm for it. And besides, it'll give Charlie that change of atmosphere he's been looking for. <laughs> hey, Charlie, come here. We've got good news for you. What's up, Professor? Don't tell me you and Doc have changed your mind about me going to Van Tines. No, but the three of us are going someplace far more interesting. After Jabba picks up the serums, we're going to pay another visit to the Nailus village. Are you loco? You know white men are taboo in that country. The last time we tried it, we were lucky to get out alive. Well, if you're afraid to come alone, Charlie, Professor Ogden and I'll go alone. I'm not afraid of man or beast, but I don't intend to put my head into a lion's mouth. If you insist on going there, why don't you see if you can see the white goddess first? Mm-hmm. And just how do you propose accomplishing that without actually going there? Get Jabba to take a note to her highness. A native at least can talk to her warriors without running into any danger. That's a good idea, Charlie. As soon as Jabba gets here, I'll ask him if he'll deliver the note. I'll write it right now. Hello, Jabba. How's everything at the trading post? Monsieur Lissana. Savantan say give Rama and you. Wanted. Henry Atkins and Nelson Vale. Escaped from Melville Penitentiary September 9th. These men are dangerous and may be armed. If seen, notify the nearest authorities. Nelson Vail. If I remember, that blighter used to be a guide around these parts. He killed a man in a brawl and drew ten years for manslaughter. Oh, that was nice company you were keeping before you met us, Charlie. Oh, stop teasing me, Professor. <laughs> Let me have a look at that. Well, their faces won't be hard to remember. Tell Mr. Van Tine we'll be on the lookout for those men. Jabba tell. Now take shipment for Sir Van Tine. Before you do that, there's one little favor we'd like to ask you to do for us. Jabba, happy to do anything for Rama. Oh, thank you, Jabba. Deliver this note to the white goddess of the Nailus tribe. No, Nailus land taboo. White goddess kill if go there. Don't be a chump, pal. The doc didn't mean for you to see her in person. Just take that little billet and give it to one of her warriors and wait for an answer. Give warrior, wait answer? That's right. Java go if Rama says. Good. After you did a box to Vantine, better get started right away. Come on, Java. I'll give you the box. How much 
much farther is it to that trading post, Nelson? Another 15 minutes. We'll wait here until it gets dark, and then we'll break into the post and grab ourselves some rifles and supplies. If everything works out tonight, we'll be in the land of the white goddess tomorrow. wonder what kind of a woman she is. The way her husband talks, she must really be a looker. Remember, he hasn't seen her in almost 20 years. What do we care how she looks? Just so long as she's loaded. Irma Milliken. Better known as the white goddess of the nailist. <laughs> what a laugh. Yeah, but what about Irma? She never even heard about us. Joe never got a chance to tip her. And for all we know, she may tell us to go fly a kite. We ask her to divvy up. You've got a tongue, Henry. We won't ask her to pay us. We'll just slip her a few crumbs once we get our hands on that stuff. You're the doctor. Let's see you operate. You will. more scared than we are. You mean we gotta cross this river? I can't swim. You won't have to. We'll walk across. The water isn't more than four feet deep any place. Hey, wait a minute. Look. Hey, what about those cracks? They'll bite us even though the water's only a foot deep. Those snappers were farther down the river the last time I came this way. Maybe so. But that was at least two years ago. Don't forget, you've been over 20 months in the cooler. Shut your trap about that prison stuff. Don't get sore, Nelson. I didn't mean any harm. There's a place farther up the river where I'm sure we can cross. This is more like it. Well, here we go.
wasn't kidding. She's really a rare dish. I never expected her to look so young. Two more! Treat, treat! You can't do that to us. We're your friends. Bornu Alaba. Yeah, who knows? Hello. Stop the man. I'm on a show, Santa. Show Millican. Starting on the tee. You say you friends? You no make trouble? That's right. We're here strictly on business. Go inside. We talk. Juan Opeci. So Joe sent you. Tell me more about that. What's there to tell? The three of us spent time together in Melville Prison. We were buddies. And when Joe took sick, he told us all about your setup here before he died. Died? That's right. So Joe's dead. There go all the plans we made for my getting out of this dark hole. Don't take it too hard. We're going to take you away from all this. Hey, you got nothing to worry about. Just get your loot together and the three of us will be on our way. What do you mean, loot? Call it whatever you like. But Joe told us uh, that you would take care of us if we took the risk of getting you out. What makes you so sure I want to leave? Now that Joe's gone... Quit your clowning, Irma. We won't hold you up. All we want is a fair shake. Just enough to make this trip worth our while. That's more like it. Sit down. My leaving here is not going to be easy. When the tribe finds me gone, they'll give chase. And if they recapture us, your lives won't be worth a penny. I know that. Get us back our rifles and guns, and we'll take care of the natives. There are too many of them. And they're all fanatics. They wouldn't stop if you killed half the tribe. The rest would get you. Fine time to tell us. After we go to all the trouble of making this trip, she decides to stay. I didn't say that at all. I'm only warning you of what might happen. Say, uh, where do you keep all that stuff Joe told us about? It's not in here, if that's what you're trying to find out. I'll have it ready to take along once I decide to go with you. Java, great Rama sent me to give white goddess message. What message? Starina Matit. Come inside, you. There, you wait. Jabba, you come here. Tell Ramar he come see White Goddess. She give him this. Now tell us what all this hocus pocus is about. These pellets have kept me in good health all these years. And what's more, they've actually preserved my youth. Hey, maybe she's got something there, Nelson. How old are you, anyway? Doesn't matter how old you are. What counts is how young you look and feel. Have it your way. But what about that Rama you told to come here? His real name is Dr. Reynolds. And he's interested in these. And what's more important, he's the answer to our getting out of here. Hmm? I, I, I don't follow you. It's very simple. Reynolds, being a doctor, is hated by most medicine men. That I can understand. So when Reynolds gets here tomorrow, 
I'll have him stay in the village overnight. The next day, when they find me missing, my medicine man will blame it on Rama's magic, and the tribe will think he made me disappear. I've got to hand it to you, Irma. You're a genius. Now what do we do next? Give me a little while to work it out. And we have some things for you to wear on the trail. remember this spot from the last time we came this way. Our porters deserted us here. This order of Tabulan. In a few minutes, we'll get to the river. That's quite a different reception from the last time we were here. Seems like the white goddess really wants to be friendly. Come, Baba. Ba. Good to see you again. Come inside. We talk. Starina Mati. You want medicine? Yes. Uh, we want it for experimental purposes. Give tomorrow. Tomorrow? Why not now? No have now. Medicine man make. You get tomorrow. Our messenger, Jabba, said there were two white men here yesterday. Are they still here? Rama speak of lost hunters? Maybe they told you they were hunters, but there are a couple of escaped convicts. Convicts? No understand. Men no good. They steal, kill. You friends? Are you kidding? They're criminals. The doc just wants to know what became of them. They hungry. Me give food. They go. Well, I was afraid they might make trouble for you and your tribe. No make trouble if Rama stay tonight. Well, I guess we'll have to. Where do we sleep? Me show. There's something I don't like about this. She's much too friendly and a lot smarter than she wants us to know. Well, what could she be up to? I don't know. But let's not take any chances. We'll stand guard during the night. We'll change every four hours while two of us sleep. That's a smart idea, Doc.
recognize you, Emma. You really look good in that. Never mind the flattery, Nelson. Let's get on with our business. Get him over on, Henry. You'll find a torch on that ledge. Get it and light it. Could she take a chance like that by herself? Her Highness is in good company. She picked those two convicts as traveling companions, and she's all dressed in modern clothes. Hey, we'd better get out of here in a hurry. This won't be a safe place for white men once those natives find those two of the goddess. You're not fooling, Professor. Let's go right now. Now, what about the drug she promised us? You'll find it right over there. This is my pile. You take your pick of either one of these, Irma. That's not our deal. I'll give you both your share when we get out of here. I'm not waiting. You try and stop me. Don't ever ask me to go there again. You're right, Charlie. From now on, that's taboo land for us.
entertainment bullseye every week with her hard riding. Straight shooting. has changed in 10 years, Tom. It's not going to be easy starting over. No, sir, I don't suppose it will be. I'm not going to give you a lecture. You're an intelligent man. During the years you've been here, I've learned to know you pretty well. You're not the sort to make the same mistake twice. You can be sure of that, sir. I've written this letter to an old friend of mine. If you feel like it, you can go see him. I know he'll do whatever he can to get you started off on the right foot. He's a sheriff at Diablo. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your confidence. Well, goodbye, Tom. And good luck. Goodbye, Warden. Jump! Jump! What do you think you're doing, Ted? Watch me beat him to the jaw. Jump! Good shooting, huh? No, Tag. I wouldn't say that was very good shooting. What do you mean? I shot him dead, and before he could even get his gun up. Tag, I think it's about time you and I had a little talk about guns. In the first place, you don't use them to go around killing people. Well, that's what they're for, aren't they? Well, if I didn't know you so well, young man, I'd say you weren't very bright. An expert uses a gun to protect lives, not to take them. It's a defense weapon, Tag, now remember that. Well, how are you going to defend yourself if some varmint draws on you without you beating to it and kill him first? I'll show you. Pull that rope. Gosh! See what I mean? Sure! Sure! Oh, Annie, is your uncle here? No, he isn't, Mr. Willits. He's out of town on business, but his deputy's around here somewhere. Something wrong? Well, I got held up again. That's what's wrong. Oh, here's his deputy now. Lofty! What is it, Ed? Two men. They jumped me just this side of Eagle Rock and got away with about $8,000 worth of gold concentrate that I was bringing from the mine to the railroad station. Have you any idea who they were? What they looked like? Just the same as before. I couldn't tell. They wore masks. As they were going away, I took a couple of shots at them. I got the horse, and I think I nicked the other fellow's hat. Leastwise, it fell off. Did you get his hat? No, I couldn't. About this time, the first zombie cuts loose and I had to take cover. And he keeps on shooting until the other fellow gets his hat and I turns it off into the rocks on foot. Still on foot. We got a good chance to catch him. Any men want to come along? Get a horse, Ed. Why, sure. We're gonna have to walk if this horse is gonna drop dead on us. Well, I'm not walking. Not in this heat, I ain't. Well, if you think I'm... Hey, wait a minute. Stay here, Jim. Get out. I said get down. Next time I'll shoot six inches lower. Get going. I know that armory from someplace. I know that face. Well, let's get moving. all about. This is one of them, all right. Look at that bullet hole I put through his hat. Where's your partner? What partner? I don't have any partner. I was held up back there on the trail and the fellow stole my horse. I don't know what you fellows are talking about. 
I was on my way to Diablo to see the sheriff. You're going to Diablo, all right, and you're going to see the sheriff. I don't know what it is you fellas think I did, but whatever it is, you're wrong. Maybe, but I don't think so. Now, wait a minute. Don't everybody go getting excited. Lofty will find them. He'd better find them. This thing is getting kind of regular. $30,000 worth of gold in the last month. Let's get out of here. Gosh, $30,000 worth of gold. What do you suppose those two bandits are going to do with it, Annie? It's a good question, Tag. It's something I'd like to find out myself. Maybe they look. I think it's about time you and I did a little detective work on our own. Come on, Tag. Hello, Annie. Hi, Tag. Say, Phil, do you know anyone around here shipping gold concentrate besides the Apex mine? Oh, there ain't much going out of here anymore. Hey, the Bolton boys are shipping some. Dan and Jim Bolton? Yeah? I thought their diggings played out a long time ago. What's on your mind, Annie? <laughs> Just curious. Thanks, Phil. All right, Annie. Bet I know what you're thinking. I'll bet there isn't a grain of gold in the Bolton mine. Come on, we're going out there and have a look around. Right. You stay here, Tag, and keep watch. I'm gonna have a look inside that mine. Right. Jim. Now I remember him. Malloy. That's who he is, Tom Malloy. What are you talking about? The guy I took this horse off, Tom Malloy. We did time together about five years ago. What do you reckon he's doing out here? I don't know. He's doing a long stretch for safe robbery. I thought he was still up there. What are you taking the saddle off that horse for? We gotta get rid of it. I don't want anything around here that'll tie us up with Malloy. That's a good idea. But we could keep the saddle. No use in losing that. I'll hide it where nobody will find it. Maybe you know you're trespassing on private property. That's right. But I was just looking for the two men who held up the gold messenger. What made you think you'd find them around here? Just a hunch, maybe. Yeah, we thought they might be hiding in that mine. Well, why don't you go ahead and have a look? I've already had a look. Tag, go get the horses. It's kind of dangerous to turn your back around here. Don't try it. I'd like to get a shot at them, too. There'll be other chances. Hi, Annie. Hello, Lofty. Well, we got one of them. You sure? What do you mean by that? I thought Dan Bolton and his brother were mixed up in this thing somewhere. Why Dan Bolton? Well, I'll explain it while I make us some coffee. Come on. Of all the crazy ideas I ever heard of, you going up to the Bolton mine. You could have gotten yourself killed. Well, Lofty, I do believe you worry about me. Well, of course I do. But that's got nothing to do with it. You could have gotten tag killed, too. Well, at least I gave that mine a good looking over. I don't believe there's a grain of gold in that place. Look, Annie, nobody can tell if there's gold in a mine by just walking in and taking a quick look around. Well, then where are they getting the stuff they're shipping out? Tell me that. Annie, the man we got locked up in there has been identified by Ed Willits. He's even got the hole in his hat that Ed put there. Well, it could be a coincidence. I still don't think we've got the right man. 
but he admits being in prison for robbery. Gives us some story about the warden writing your Uncle Luke a letter, only he can't produce the letter. But he explained that the letter was in the saddlebag on the horse they took from him. Ah, oh, the whole story sounds too fishy. I'm sorry, Annie, I just don't believe it. Oh, Lofty, your only trouble is you're just as stubborn as a mule. I am not, it's you just that... so. You got an idea set in your head and you just don't want anyone to change it. Now look, Annie, you know that isn't so. Then why don't you send the warden a telegram and check? All right, I'll do that. Miss Annie? Yes? I heard you mention Dan Bolton a while ago. Yes, do you know him? We were in prison together. He served out his time and got out about five years ago. Well, that's about the length of time he's been around here. That fellow that took my horse, there was something familiar about him. I seem to recognize his voice. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. And it was Dan Bolton. I could swear to that. Look, with your prison record, you're in a tough spot unless we can prove somebody else held up that gold messenger. Will you help me? Will you do anything I ask? Yes, ma'am. I'll be right back. I do for you. Well, I've got a story for your paper. Good. What is it? Well, you can say this. It has just been disclosed that the man who's being held for the holdup of the Apex Mine Messenger is Tom Malloy, who recently escaped from prison while serving a term for robbery. Make the convict, eh? Say, hey, that is a good story. Will it be in tomorrow's paper? It certainly will, and right on the front page. Thanks to you, Annie. You're welcome, Mr. Copler. Goodbye. Bye. Oh, oh Tag, hold still. I'll be through in a minute. Oh, Annie, for gosh sakes. Just a couple of more pins. Hello, Annie. Good morning. How do you do, madam? Oh, it's Tag. Hey, that's very becoming. That sells it. I won't do it. Oh, Tag, now look what you've done. I'm going to have to fit this all over again. Not on me, you won't. Oh, please, Tag, it'll only take a minute. I take breakfast to your prisoner. Why don't you try it on Lofty? He's bigger than me. Hey, that's a good idea. Oh, no. Say, have you seen the morning's paper? No, not yet. Take a look. The man we got locked up in there escaped from state prison. No, really? Now, you see, Annie, a man's judgment is better in things like this. Why, well, I knew he wasn't telling the truth from the minute we nailed him. I'm sorry I argued with you, Lofty. I should have known that you're much smarter about such things than I am. Oh, I didn't mean that, Annie, and you know it. You're plenty smart about a lot of things. But dealing with crooks is a man's job. And you can't be sentimental. That's right. And I suppose that's why you're such a good deputy sheriff. Lofty! Your prisoner escaped. What? When I came to bring him his breakfast, that cell door was wide open. I, uh, I guess it's kind of my fault. Kind of your fault? What do you mean? Well, I think I left the cell door unlocked last night. You deliberately let him go? Well, Annie, I hope you realize what you've done. You made me the laughing stock of the whole town. That man escaped from state prison. Lofty, I'd like to explain about You'll it. You'll have to explain about it later. Right now, I have to go out and find Tom Malloy all over again. Gee, Lofty's mad, Annie. I've never seen him act like that before. You'll get over it. I'm going in and eat your breakfast, Tag. Please. Annie. Everything's all set. You sure you know what you're doing? Yes, ma'am. I thought it all out. Oh, good. Good luck to you, and be careful. Thanks, Miss Annie. I'll bring back that letter that the warden gave me. Did you get all the stuff? I sure did. I got some information, too. You know that Tom Malloy you're taking the horse off of? He wasn't released from state prison. He busted out. Yeah? Yeah, and you want a real laugh? They got him locked up in the Diablo jail for robbing the gold messenger. <laughs> well, this ought to take some of the heat off of us. You know, I was kind of suspicious of that guy. When I knew him five years ago, he still had 15 years to serve. So he busts out, huh? Yeah, but it didn't do him much good. They caught up with him again. Howdy. 
wonder if I could hit you up for a little grub. I got money to pay for it. Well, if it isn't Tom Malloy. You made a mistake, stranger. My name is Smith. Cut it out, Tom. I'm Dan Bolton. Remember me? Well, I'll be dogged if it ain't. Dan Bolton, how are you? This is my brother, Jim. Hello, Jim. Howdy. I heard they had you locked up in the Diablo jail. You don't think I'm going to let any two-bit jail hold me after bringing out of state prison, do you? It's a nice, quiet layout you got here. Maybe we can do a little business. Yeah, what kind of business? Like I say, I got a little money and need a place to hide out. Sure, why not? Wait a minute, Dan, are you crazy? They're looking for this guy. Tom's an old friend. You don't think I'd turn down an old friend, do you? Take care of your horse back at the corral there, Tom. We'll rustle up some grub. What's the idea of letting an escaped convict hole up here? He's going to get us into a mess of trouble. Take it easy. We can use this guy. He's one of the best safe experts in the country. With what we've got on him, he'll have to do anything we say. Well, I still don't like it. Jim, we've got a pretty good setup here, Tom, if you'd like to string along with us. Nah, I don't know anything about mining. It isn't hard to learn the way we do it. What do you mean? Shut up. You talk too much. Tom's OK. Stop worrying about him, Jim. What's the deal? Well, we've got a gold mine, see? Well, there isn't any gold in it. Two clients. So? Some of the mines around here have got lots of gold. They ship and concentrate down to the railroad station. But on the way, they're relieved of it. I'm beginning to understand. Gold concentrate isn't easy to get rid of. That is, unless you've got a gold mine yourself. Then it's easy. It just comes out of your own mine. Pretty smart. I wouldn't mind being in on a deal like that. You never could learn to keep your mouth shut, Dan. That's why you had to spend five years of your life in the pen. Relax, Jim, relax. So what's your idea? Well, when Jim went into town this morning, he found out there's another shipment going out early tomorrow morning, right after daylight. Being Sunday, they don't figure to be bothered, right? That's right. We can knock them over in Sidewinder fast. They won't be expecting us there. Sounds OK. Count me in. Well, it means an early start. Better turn in. In here? Right. 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 coffee on the stove. You're not going to square yourself with a pot of coffee. I've been out combing those hills since early this morning. Annie, how could you have done such a crazy thing? What's your uncle going to say? Well, if it works out the way I think it's going to, he'll say I'm pretty smart. Want to hear about it? No, but I'll have the coffee. Wait, Lofty, you'll see I'm right. Trouble with you, Annie, is you're too trusting. Malloy's probably miles away from here by now. We'll never see him again. What's the matter? Keep talking. But don't look toward the window. I'm sorry, ma'am. What were you doing out there? Waiting for her to be alone so I could come in and talk to her. What happened, Tom? Well, I went up to the Boltons, all right. Well, did you get the warden's letter? I couldn't find my horse or my saddlebags. Still sounds fishy to me. I don't blame you for that. You've been right all along, Miss Annie. They're your men, all right. You mean they've been pulling these holdups? Every last one of them. Not only that, but they got another one planned for tomorrow morning. Well, I'll go up and bring them in. No, wait a minute, Lofty. You haven't got any evidence yet. You've got to catch him in the act. Yeah, that's right. You know where they're going to hold this messenger up? At a place called Sidewinder Pass. They found out he's going through there tomorrow morning at daybreak. Well, I'll be there before daybreak. You go back to the cabin. I'll round up some men. Well, there's nothing in any of this stuff that'll tell us anything. 
The only thing I can figure out is Malloy took off because he was afraid we'd turn him in. Yeah, you fooled mighty easy, Dan. I found this letter in his saddlebag. It's from the prison warden to the sheriff in Diablo. He didn't bust out. He was released, huh? That's right. He's a plant. He's working for the sheriff. And you had to talk your fool head off to him. They ought to have been here by now, Lofty. You don't reckon that Malloy double-crossed you? No, I don't think so. Well, they might have got the messenger farther up. No, they couldn't have. Got the road covered all the way to the mine. Well, maybe they'll be alive. This way, Tom. Are we going to Sidewinder Pass? It's that way. We changed our plans. Yeah, we forgot to tell you. We're going to knock over the bank in Diablo. But it's Sunday. Won't that be closed? Yeah, we figured on that. But you're pretty good at cracking safes. We got everything you'll need right here. Do you realize it's almost time for Sunday school and you're not even dressed yet? Wait a minute, sis. Those two Bolton brothers just rode in town and you're escaped prisoners with them. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. I saw them. Look, Tag, I want you to ride out the Sidewinder Pass as fast as you can and get hold of Lofty. Sure, sis. You'll be taking care of when this thing blows. Then when this thing goes off, the whole town's here. We gotta be ready to make a fast getaway. Yeah, you go out and get the horse and bring her out the front. Wait there. about the warden's letter. I just found it on him. Come on. Hey, Annie, I met Lofty right out at the edge of town. <laughs> Good work, Tag. Now hurry along and get dressed or Sunday school's gonna be over. Go on. <laughs> what well, was the answer to the telegram I sent the prison warden? Yeah, what does it say? Listen, and if you need a new deputy to send to Red Rock District, I believe Tom Malloy would be a good man for the job. <laughs> that telegram came a little bit late, didn't it?